Before we get started today, we wanted to tell you about some cool stuff we're moving forward on because you may have heard us mention that we're going to do a rewatch of The Rings of Power, the first season in anticipation of season two, which we have just rumored to hear that Tom Bombadil is going to be a part of. Ben had this great idea that we'll do the rewatch specifically with our Patreon subscriber. So if you're not a Patreon subscriber, make sure you press pause on this show right now. Head over to patreon.com forward slash podcast of the rings. Sign up and we will let anybody at any level that you sign up besides free to join us for our watch along. The first episode of Rings of Power will watch on stream together and then the rest of the season we'll watch on patreon we have some other cool things coming up on patreon too don't you think ben we do and just to be clear we're doing the watch along on patreon but our reviews of each episode is going to be for the public so it's just a little added bonus content for you guys because i thought it'd be fun to like talk about it during the episode and then you guys will get our fresh thoughts right afterwards for the public feed but a little bit of bonus content. We want to give you guys a little taster on Twitch. So if you if you have Amazon Prime, which a lot of the population does, you can watch along with us or, you know, uh, pick your your favorite. Um, uh, how should I say this? Uh, y- Yoho sites and, you know, oh. watch along with us as well. Uh, you know, if you don't want to. We don't a, endorse that. You don't endorse that, but, you know, <laughs> Bezos doesn't need, like, everybody's money. He doesn't need a third super yacht. Um, so, yeah, uh, watch along with us, guys. We will give you a date as soon as we know. We're just going to – Jess keeps inviting her friends on this podcast. So we're just going to get through those real quick, and then we're going <laughs> to – then we're going to do the watch along. I really hope you are paying in order to see the video version of this podcast because <laughs> – the feelings that Ben has instilled in me at the moment. All right, Ben, see you on the other side. Hello, everybody. I did invite my friend to the show today, but also... He's been one of the biggest supporters of me and my life and this show and came up with our first Patreon incentive, which we have still yet to hit. We one have day. one day. We have Scott Rubin on the show. Say hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. What was that Patreon incentive that you had? Uh, we life? are the the movie that we're gonna all watch together and talk about. Yeah, yeah. Lord, Lord of Lord of the G strings. That's exactly right. Um, classic, classic. So, so that will be. Um, we won't watch it with the Patreon, but it will be a <laughs> Patreon exclusive episode where we review Lord of the G strings for Patreon subscribers once we hit ten Patreon subscribers. So there's there's a lot of fun things happening on the Patreon. And have and I told I, you guys I've already seen it like a long time ago? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah me too like Several those times. early cinemax days like were life-changing <laughs> was it on cinemax skinemax yes was it though yeah yeah like that like yeah so it like it was on i might have accidentally seen it then yeah yes it was on like late like you know the late night hbo that kind of stuff like it was in rotation mm-hmm. no i gotcha um yeah all, all, all those misty monday movies so yeah. good. God, I don't even know. see. I was just like looking for any kind of semblance of the act in those er- in that day. Like there was like the rotation sure. of back and you know. Okay, gotta go to this channel see if the the, the, the act is happening at this point. Yeah. You know, you know, you know what <laughs> yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, what, like, what was it? The the nice guys. You you say Misty Mondays. The nice guys is all about like um conspiracy, like in the porn industry. If you guys have never seen that movie, mm. it's really good. Uh, and yeah. the main like catalyst of the movie, the porn star, her name is Misty Mountains, and I was like, "Oh, hey, look at that! <laughs> That's fantastic, right? <laughs> That's a good Perfect. crossover too, right?" Shane Black, you know, he's a fan. <laughs> so when we, I met Ben, I knew of Ben peripherally for a little bit, and then finally, you know, a lot of the restrictions were lifting on um, COVID, and our like social butterfly friend Janelle Santa Cruz finally made it so that Ben and I could meet IRL, and then Ben quickly. Weaseled his way on to be a guest on our show. Oh, Quickly. see, it's such a such a bad thing to invite your friends to the show to I know, interview right? them. Wow, I will never forget that. Like, 
Because I don't think you knew. I think we were talking. In, you were either in my chat or I was in your chat. I can't remember. And you were talking about character growth and how there isn't any in Lord of the Rings. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Did I say that? You did. You said no one has an arc in Lord of the Rings. Did I um, say that? I'm I sure I believed that at that time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't wow. say that I didn't believe that. Wow. But yeah. You guys had mentioned you wanted to watch The Hobbit movies. And I was like, oh, if you, never, if you ever need Was I this? trying to, like, goad you? Like. I don't know. <laughs> but I was just like, I was very nice about it. Uh, I was just I like, oh, yeah, Aragorn that. has uh, Aragorn has an arc. And you're like, oh, yeah, I guess he does. I was like, yeah. <laughs> There's a few other people what that do, too. What was I smoking? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, that's, uh, by like, for every, every you know, we like to call them nerd bros. That's how you converse <laughs> with people. You don't you don't shame them and be like, you're so, like, like Jessica, like, I, I made, um, the Avatar, the last Airbender TikTok the other day, and like people were talking about it, and I made the point because you know I haven't watched the Netflix show. My roommate's enjoying it, but I'm I've seen that there's you know changes from the cartoon, which obviously there's gonna be, uh, yeah. and it's just like it's an adaptation. There's gonna be changes, and I mentioned right. how in the books, uh, Aragorn has um, Anduril from the beginning, has Narsil from the beginning, wants to be king, is ready to be king, all day every day. And, you know, gets it reforged before the fellowship even begins and has it the entire time. And then in the movie, he's like very reluctant. He doesn't he still wants to be a ranger until literally Elrond gets in his face and like, it's time. Like, we're we're done. Baby, babysitting over here. And some guy literally came into my comments was like, I don't know, man. I think people have seen Avatar more than they've read Lord of the Rings. I I remember that comment. And I didn't say anything. Wow. And then Jessica was like, I don't like she was very nice. And she was like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> and well, because what he was saying is not enough people. Not, our generation didn't read the books before watching yeah. Lord of the Rings. Like no one was anticipating the Lord of the Rings movies. He and said he that. said no one had read them. It was a very like he was almost saying it was counterculture. And I yeah. said, oh. do you remember who paid for our tickets, which were our parents who watched who read those books? <laughs> Yeah, but you're right. There, it was like you were gentle with him, which inspired me to be gentle with that person too. But and then finally, I was just like, yeah, because he kept going, and I was oh, like, dude, yeah. you are comparing a 20 year old cartoon show to the biggest piece of fiction in the history of literature. Stop what you're doing. <laughs> and he's like, well, that's not what I was doing. Maybe you're reading comprehension. And I just blocked him. I was like, that's yeah. not how. This isn't like internet comments. Have you know? I don't want to be Mike Tyson because I'm not Mike Tyson. But internet has gotten to where people don't know how to react without getting punched in the face sometimes. And sure. you know what? I don't. I'm not that guy. But other people are. And like there was a concert. The uh, artist Mitski. I don't know who this is. I don't know who the artist is. But it popped up on my for you page. And it seems like a very intimate, like like 200 person show. And in between each songs, people are like, mother, oh my gosh, she's mothering. And it's like, this isn't a comment section. You're in real life right now. Like, stop what you're doing. It's embarrassing Ugh. everybody around you. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it's pretty aw- it was awful. awful. Um, yikes it's- on bikes. Well, I, I've actually <laughs> seen Scott do some pretty wonderful and excellent navigation of online comments. Um, Scott's. This is what we were talking a little bit before the beginning of the podcast. Scott's moral code is one that, like, I just really esteem. And, like, if I'm confused about how I'm feeling about something, I can usually get a good temperature on how to feel about something if I run it by Scott. Um, Scott is, like, a vocal supporter of, like, female representation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's actually really (laughs) confused. You're leaving. I did this before the podcast, too, guys. Like, perfect. Jess, you're leaving too much space in between your words for me to just slide right in there. No, it's just perfect. Jump, just if, jump in there. This is what yeah. I want. This is what I want. Uh, to, he's a wonderful supporter of uh, female representation in Warhammer. And I've seen you, you go to town on those people, Scott. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, you. I think the the biggest thing you have to remember on the internet is you got to pick your battles, and mm. some things are important to push back on and fight against. But you can always some, like some stuff isn't. You can always re- rely on those bro nerds to come to battle when someone does represent us. You know, 
uh, what is the, what are they the Marines? A female Marine? Yeah, F- female Space Marines. Yeah, and and so you're kind of like at the ready, but I but I do yeah. see Scott like engage them well, um, and and I think you guys are good examples to other people to like. I wish I could do that better too. If I'm going to engage, I'd rather mm. engage better. So what I was going to initially say too is it was Scott's original idea that you take over the mantle from. Uh, my boyfriend. I didn't know that till recently, and I was very touched. It was one of those things that we had bandied about. Me being like a little sad that like Alex didn't have the bandwidth for it, Mm -hmm. but still wanting to do it, and already you having weaselled your way onto five hundred episodes as a guest with us, it made perfect sense. But Scott was couldn't have been right. Couldn't have been more right. No, could, wait, wait, yeah. wait. Well, Which one I know. Was that? Couldn't have been doing, right could, or couldn't have been more right? I'm not doing well. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. A lot of brain we'll see, we'll see what there's, a big, there's a big difference in that one word that you missed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You be the guest. Um, so, Scott is a fa- you're, you, How much of a fan would you say of Lord of the Rings you are? Or, like, how much does it occupy your percentage of a pie brain? Um, not a tremendous amount. I mean, I grew up with it. My dad had all the books. Um, I still have a couple of, well, I actually have all of his books, but, um, like he had this cool, like collector's edition of the Hobbit from way back. Um, Ooh. I read his Lord of the Rings, cool. um, paperbacks that are falling apart completely. But aren't they so, so I special up, to have? Yeah. Oh yes. I, I, I would, I would never get rid of them. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then obviously, like, really excited when the movies came out. So, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I'm I'm a fan, but it's not like I wouldn't say it's one of my main fandoms. But you know it well. And then the other side of that too is a lot of your fandoms have pulled from Lord of the Rings quite heavily. I don't think I understood until recently. Like D and D probably is. Hey, we want to mm. play in the Lord of the Rings world. How do we do that? Yeah. Yeah, and tons have been written about, you know, obviously, there's there's so much fantasy lore coming from, you know, Norse mythology and things like that, that have filtered down into Dungeons and Dragons and other things. But a lot of it was filtered through the lens of Tolkien. Sure. <laughs> like, that's, that's just how it happened. Sure. Um, hey. And one of the things that Is actually that it's, it's kind of... She's just <laughs> putting her nose in my coffee right now. So. <laughs> no. Cute. We'll see if we'll see if any of my cats come and visit we'll during. How uh, is Frodo two. doing? Fro- so, Frodo's great. So you care about Lord of the Rings enough to name? I to was going to say you have two Lord of the Rings <laughs> cats over there. Well, I so sort of coming around. Um, I did. You know, when I wrote my my book, uh, Naming Your Little Geek, I did make sure, of course, to include a ton of character names from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Uh, and then, yeah, when it came to naming our cats, that was our source for, hey, what's uh, what should we name our cats? So how much do you feel like Arwen truly embodies... <laughs> Zero. <laughs> but that's I the didn't fun want of to it, say though. anything when we had the game night, but <laughs> Yeah. And I and I talk about that in the book, especially when you're naming animals. It's a great opportunity to name the complete opposite, you know, yes. of, of a of a what a character represents. If you had to do it over again now that you know Arwen's true personality, who how would you rename her? Shelob, say... maybe? <laughs> she lob. Oh, yep, she <laughs> is she lob. You know, I really try positive reinforcement when I'm over at Scott's house. Like, hi, pretty girl. And, like, Scott's wife goes, who are you talking to? (laughs) (laughs) And then you get through saying that, and then she hisses at you and scratches at you. I've gotten a few swipes. Have they met yet? Have they gotten along yet? So So, Frodo is just a little context. Frodo is the newest Mm -hmm. cat, a little baby. And and. Ben was thrilled to meet Frodo. I have a pic. We have a picture oh up on our. Gosh. It's a uh, Twitter. It's such of- a good picture and such a cute little orange cat. I was ready. I was she- ready for the moment. Um, yeah. So Frodo's new to the family, essentially. Yeah, we've had him for a couple months now. Um, he is. He's adorable. He is a rascal. He gets into everything. He gets onto every shelf under every anything he can get into. He will. Um, they they sort of have an understanding. Arwen, who's nine, uh, she does not like him, but and she will still hiss at him and bat at him quite fiercely. But you know, when they don't think we're watching, we'll see them playing together. So Aww. she does, 
she does allow his presence. I mean, early on, once they had already been introduced to, she was sleeping mm-hmm. on the bed adjacent to him i think that's a sign of like at least tolerance yeah yeah Yeah. there was absolute hatred which obviously she does hit her you know maximum um Mm -hmm. i don't you that wouldn't have happened so we do have something we wanted to specifically talk about but what shall we pull your tarot card today oh sure all right so what's gonna happen is i'm gonna sift through this and you're gonna tell me when to stop so that way, okay. what I what card I stop on ends up being your tarot card for this episode, or maybe for your day. Okay, you fully believe in this stuff. All right. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Starting now. Do, do, do. Stop. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Really engaging audio. Ooh. The <laughs> page of cups upside down for those of you oh, on Patreon who are watching. That's oh. interesting. Okay. I, I, it, it looks like an ape man. <laughs> I'm not quite <laughs> sure who. It's It's definitely a, a t- hobbit. An ape man, typical of how my day is going, sure. There's also a dead orc pink face thing going on. Oh, oh. I know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Cups, right? Page of cups. What is a page yes. of cups? Oh, Ooh. okay. Page of cups is band of brass took. But, okay. Okay. Yeah, but yours is, was reverse. Is he a fool? I he probably is. Uh, seeing as he's he not is... the inventor of golf, that's Bull Roar took. Bull Bull Bull. Oh, the one that Bull um, Roarer. Bull Roarer. He's the one who um get what Bilbo gets his adventure aside from. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, like he rode gotcha. an actual horse and invented the oh, game of golf by hitting ooh, a golf oh, head into shit. a rabbit hole. Right. Nope. I think that's who this is. Oh. Okay. Oh. Maybe that's his real name. Bandabras. Bandabras. Because there is uh, an orc head back here. So I'm going to guess that is this character. Okay. He does look, he does look like a golfer. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, reversed is no one begins any pursuit as an expert. And right now you are in danger of, your fe- uh, of allowing your fear of failure to prevent you from trying. Not only can this leave you feeling self-conscious, but it limits your potential for growth. Embrace your in- inexperience and allow yourself to learn. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just thinking it is, I do basically think. basically calling you woke, Scott. So it's some... <laughs> Ooh, I think it's the opposite of oh. <laughs> Yeah, you're saying anti. <laughs> Stop being, you're so anti-SJW over there. <laughs> Stop supporting Trump and. <laughs> right. Don't open my mind to other alternatives, right? I'm, I'm a Nikki Haley fan now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. So she's she's gonna come uh, back. She's whoo, gonna do that it. That was a good one. That she's was gonna good one. do it. Let's let's go, Nikki. <laughs> so oh, I man. so I have a question. Yeah. He's a Haley how, head over there. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so how much have you two talked about or Jessica in the whole history of this podcast talked about how Tolkien used his sources? Uh probably in the beginning with Alex a little bit more. Um Okay. But certainly not enough for me to confidently talk about it, actually. Okay, because one of the things that Tolkien is not accurate at all, even though I enjoyed (laughs) how ridiculous it was. Sure, sure. Um, Because one of the things that I like to talk about when I when I talk about names and naming stuff, um, I talk about when you're when you need a name for your story or you know your name in an RPG character or something feel free to you know go and look at literature go and look at mythologies and borrow names because lots of people do it it's it's a common thing and my my favorite example of that is tolkien lifted straight up lifted a bunch of names out of norse mythology um i love that the, uh, i love that like cuz he kind of gets lazy sometimes right he's like here's Gol- yeah, golgoroth I mean, and mount doom <laughs> yeah right and and i mean and again like that was sort of Tolkien was out to sort of bring Norse mythology and the, the idea of Anglo-Saxons, which is bullshit. But um, anyway, sort of bring that, you know, into English and British, uh, you know, mythology and culture. But um, if you go and look in the the prose Edda, which I have here, which oh, I, I carry around with me all the time. I didn't realize uh, that that's how it was spelled. Yes. Got it. Okay. 
B D D A, um, which is like our primary source for North Norse mythology, which okay. is really weird because it's a teeny tiny book. But um, if you go through that book, there are tons and tons of names because they'll talk about you know Odin, and Odin has like fifty different names that he can be called, and they all mean different things. But if you go through the book, you'll you'll find a lot that are very familiar. And I I have a list here that I've brought up, but uh, the names that you'll find in the book include Dwalin, Biffer, Bomber, Nori, Ori, Oin, and Thorin, Gimli, and Gandalf are all just lifted right out of Norse mythology. That's fascinating. Those are actually. all names for Odin, or are those different things? Uh, different things. Okay, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Okay. So I'm actually not super surprised that the Prozetta is so small because. When I was listening to a mythology podcast, one of the things they said was the challenge when they were recreating them and like, because they would kind of dramatize them, is that there really Mm. isn't a lot of Norse mythology like written down or agreed upon. Is that correct? Yeah, because so much of their culture was oral. So they didn't write things down. So much of their culture. And then. (laughs) So even, even the Prose Edda is a couple of generations removed from the actual people who were telling these stories. And even the prose edda, you kind of have to look for where has Christianity affected these stories? Um, I because, see. You know, but, um, but yeah. North so that, is that why is he awesome. wanted to take, so what, what would you say his mission was, or do you know this? Um, what was his mission in taking North mytholo- Norse mythology and wanting to bring it to present day culture? I, mean, I saw somebody refer to Tolkien as what was he? It was a he was an, an a, a Scandinavian supremacist, not a racist, but a supremacist, <laughs> something like that. Where he just isn't it worse it, to be a supremacist? Seems, oh, <laughs> arguably, depending I mean, on how he, you. No, he just really likes Scandinavian. He doesn't dislike anybody else. He just really <laughs> likes Scandinavian. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean, there's no. I, well, I mean, I think it's it's, I think it's fairly established that he just he thought that England should have its own right mythology and and you know th- that can stretch back oh, further and have elements. They do. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not disagreeing, <laughs> but um, but yeah, he he clearly <laughs> thought uh, certain stories and people's practices were more important than others. I see. That's interesting. Because he must have been looking at like Greek mythology and Roman mythology and not seeing that kind of British Empire mythology and wanting to have yeah. like that kind There's of There's no British, you know, Hercules and Zeus or, you know, mm-hmm. British Odin uh, and Thor and stuff like that. So I, th- I think that's interesting in its own way. Um, but like... <laughs> The British Empire sucks ass. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're yeah. terrible people. So, and I mean, yeah. I'm sure the Ro- like the Roman and the Norse, like they, like any empire is not good because they didn't like just go up Correct. to people and be like, "Hey, can we have this?" Like, can nobody- we cohabitate <laughs> yeah. here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. They em- weren't just like em- oh, empire spreading our culture around. No, they're just like pillaging and other things that can't be said like i do i do to that exact point though ben it's not like that uh colonizing aspect of britain is present in the books at least like he's not glorifying that i think you yeah. have a different relation wouldn't you say that scott do you- yeah that, i i would agree with that it doesn't seem yeah we're, we're you're not rooting for gondor to go out and take over everything yeah, I mean, they they definitely just like stuck staked their claim on land as they found it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they actually are. If you could argue against Sauron being a colonizer, and they're trying to take him out, it's true. I mean, in a sense, you could you could look at it. We we know he hates yeah. an allegory, but uh, you could look <laughs> at it that way if you wanted. So, how do you feel like the Christianity is, is representative? In like is Gandalf Jesus? Is that like what you think, or or like would Aragorn be I, Jesus? Is this something I, you want to talk about? Even <laughs> no, no, it's, it's an interesting question. I mean, there's I know that there's a lot of 
people people look for Jesus qualities in Frodo and Sam. Ah, sort of to combined their you know inability to be corrupted. Um, you know, perseverance, obviously, but still keeping some sense of, of, Faith. yeah. And, um, what's the word for it? Not, not, um, not naivete, but just innocence. Like, yeah. That's a, that's a good word for it. Um, but yeah, obviously, but you can look at any sort of the, any of the, the main heroes and, I mean, just like everything, you can find parallels to, to whatever you want. Sure. But yeah, it's uh, unlike, you know, someone like C.S. Lewis, the Christianity is a little bit more veiled, which I think is is probably why Lord of the Rings has been so popular over the, the years. It's not it's not as blatant. Sure, sure. Um wait. C.S. Lewis. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Could you <laughs> imagine? <laughs> I Man, did find I that do, shocking I, as a kid. That is crazy, though. Like, how? What do you think the reason was that the the Narnia movies fell off the way they did? Was it just they were making them too slowly? That the audience like was growing with it, but wasn't ready to grow with it? Because like when Prince Caspian mm-hmm. came out, I was like, yeah, this is a little darker, and. Yeah. We're a little older, so this makes sense for me. Like, this is the two towers, basically. And right. by the time, what was the, I can't even remember what the third one was called. Um, I just, it was so strange because the first one came out right in the pocket. It was right after Lord of the Rings. It had the mm-hmm. battles. It had Liam Neeson being Lion Jesus, and it was amazing. Oh. Um <laughs> Uh, what's her name? Tilda Swinton being the ice queen was mm. so great. Like it was re- a really wow. good movie. And then this, I thought the sec, I haven't seen Prince Caspian in a long time, but I remember enjoying it and be like, yeah, this is a pretty solid sequel. And I haven't read the books. My sister did. She loved them. Mm. She's read all seven. Um, wow. yeah. And then by the third, I still haven't seen the third one. Like I still have yeah. not seen the third movie. And then they just, and I know Greta Gerwig, that's like her next project, which I feel is uh, a big, big undertaking. I mean, I said that about Barbie, too, and she crushed it. And so I'm right. glad that it is Greta Gerwig because I feel like she has a vision for it. She has a reason for doing it besides the paycheck that she's going to get from Netflix. But it's like the Dark Tower where you're mm-hmm. kinda, you kind of have to do seven seasons like you can't just yeah. do one story otherwise they would have just done the lion the witch in the wardrobe because there is a full story there of oh the sure. kids fall into the in the wardrobe they defeat the ice queen aslan comes back mm-hmm. and they become kings for a while and then oh was it all a dream what happened and then which is a yeah. terribly sad ending i can't even imagine what that would do to your psyche that you lived an entire lifetime as royalty <laughs> and then you have to go back to post world war one britain like <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah. As a child. Like, they don't, I don't know. I know, I think they cover that a little bit in the books I've heard, but oh my God, mm-hmm. that's, in, that's, God, what the a, trauma. You can't, the you trauma. can't, yeah, yeah, no, you yeah. can't live that life. Well, well, and there was that other, there was that other one too. What was it? The, the golden compass, right? That yes, was yes, yes, yes. They did the first one and they were supposed to be, you know, a hundred more and it just never happened. I heard the show's good. Uh, I know uh, mm-hmm. Lynn Manuel Miranda's in it, and um, uh, what's her name mm-hmm. from? Uh, is it Daphne Keen from? She's the the little Wolverine from Logan. Oh, oh, oh cool. yeah, she's good. Mm-hmm. She's a good little actor. Side note: Alex and I just watched all of House, and uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda comes in hot. <laughs> it is wild. <laughs> it's and he's annoying. Hey, yo, which House, is perfect. I got a medical proposition for you. <laughs> I don't know. Was that good? No, you're not. You are literally lifting what? words. <laughs> he is a. He's in an uns- insane asylum with house. <laughs> That's right. And that, they do that a rap. Interesting they do a rap battle time. together. No. They do a call and response. They genuinely do this. Now there is some charming elements to the character, but not much. <laughs> That that's the thing is that like these these procedural shows when they are in the pocket when yeah. they are you know CSI Las Vegas with William Peterson in the beginning 
Like there was a summer in college that if I saw the cold open to a CSI on FX, mm-hmm. oh God, I'm going to sit here for an hour, commercials and all, and I'm going to watch it. <laughs> but then like they just have to keep going, like Law and Order, like they have to get more ridiculous, you know, like oh, even yeah. you know all yep. the now it's like Chicago Fridays or whatever it is where there's like Med and 911 and PD and you know like what I, what I say, like Coast Guard off Lake Michigan or something. I don't know, man. Like it's crazy. Pothole, pothole edition. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Chicago Parks and Rec. Like <laughs> they should do that. They Yesterday, really Alex and I. So we had a tornado watch here last night, and um, like the the temperature and pressure dropped like rapidly. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. thunder started. It's cool. It was supposed to snow last night. It didn't, but anyway, it was like seventy degrees yesterday. It's twenty degrees now, and. The fire department, a little way away from us, the guy was just smoking a cigarette. And I was like, that's my Chicago fire right, <laughs> right there. Um, so, so he was ready. He was ready to jump in, though. So ready. Anything happened. So, fi- so fire. Um, so one of the things, too, Scott, you've introduced me to so many different things in life. And one of them being Warhammer. Um, another thing being another thing. And another thing is Heroclix. Yes. Now, I I have we've had um we've had occasion to play Warhammer before. We have not had occasion mm-hmm. to really play HeroClix. I think we tried something with ships once. Do you remember on one of your streams? Yes. So it was HeroClix, yes. so wasn't That's it? That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we did, we did do that. Yeah. You right. gifted me too with the enti- like the major original series Star Trek characters of the HeroClix, which is very cool. Mm-hmm. They're all on my shelf. And something that I think is really interesting about Heroclix is the fantasy that you might have in your head or like, oh, what would it be like if Sauron fought, you know, Dr. Demento? You can play out those scenarios. So have you ever included or incorporated, like, Lord of the Rings characters? Are they of, of value in Heroclix? Do you want to explain a little bit about Heroclix for yeah. us? Yeah, for sure. So Do you Heroclix know about Heroclix is a... Then? I don't. Oh, okay. Welcome oh, okay. to this world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Heroclix is a is a tabletop miniature game uh, that's been around for like twenty five years now. It's crazy how long it's been going on, and but a lot of people haven't still haven't heard about it. It's weird, but um, they're it was a big thing on Hyper for a while. That's how we know. A lot yeah, of our we friends. did. God, yeah, um, God. yeah. I I I was on a um, a show on Geek and Sundry where we played Heroclix, and then we did it on Hyper for a while uh with um starting with hector and um yeah they're like around two inch tall figures they're on a dial base so you actually turn the dial as they take damage um and their stats change and their abilities change um and and yeah you play and the the really great thing about the game is that they have multiple licenses and properties that they've done over the years and they're all compatible so, so it kind the of core... is like magic now, where magic you can play Transformers against Lord of the right. Rings and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. So while HeroClix started with Marvel and DC Comics characters, over the years they've done Star Trek humans and Star, you know, Star Trek people rather, and Star Trek spaceships. Is there a um, seven again, or eight all... figure in there for HeroClix? <laughs> Sadly, they they haven't gotten to that one yet. But it's, I'm sure. Only I'm sure real Star Trek it's, fans know, so any, I'm not really surprised. <laughs> I got yelled at um, for that that amazing clip. I was looking at it on our on our Instagram feed, and Instagram's like, people are swiping away. You should consider making the top more interesting. I know the what but more we, interesting? The, the the beginning of your reel more interesting. Like, I guess the lead is in- Instagram is passive aggressive with its <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> Well, well, people aren't engaged is what they're saying. So there's like it. swiping away mm-hmm. to get because they're not getting the the sample of what that I, I knew as I was showing to Alex as I was editing it, editing it. I was like, we need this for context. But is it boring? You know, like people only have this short attention span. What sure. was the funniest moment in the whole episode? What wasn't grabbing people. Anyway, I felt really hurt by Instagram last night. Yeah, Carry on. Awful. Awful. <laughs> um. Yeah, so again, so over the years, there have been hero clicks of Street Fighter and Halo and um, Jaegers and Kaiju from Pacific Rim and Eddie, um, uh, Dead Eddie from uh, uh, Iron Maiden covers and just like all of these random things. And you can all, you can, oh, uh, WWE wrestlers and just so many different things. And they all have compatible 
um, abilities and stats, and you can play all of them together or against each other. Uh, so, for instance, Hector, our friend, he loves to play a team of Gandalf and Doctor Doom. And really, he and That's he demolishes crazy people. It's a <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then they have abilities that help each other because they're both mystical characters, and yeah, it just it's it's great. It's it's a lot of fun. I love that you could also build a narrative of like how does Doctor mm-hmm. Doom end up in the same realm as Gandalf too. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, so WizKids. I'm sure there's makes a Marvel the game, comic they... out there somewhere. They've done everything <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, so they started off with a, a Lord of the Rings set, and then it did well enough that they went back and they did a set for each Lord of the Rings movie, and then they did a set for each Hobbit movie as well. So there are a sizable amount of these uh, figures out there, and there for the for those of you who are watching, um, there's my Faramir. Who I, I know you're, you're a big fan of Faramir. Do we ever see Faramir shoot a bow? Yeah, that's how we get introduced to him. He shoots oh, that's the guy how, off the yeah, that's right. He's, he's that's right. away. That's right. Okay, um, just once, though. <laughs> true. Some of the, I mean, obviously, some of the best. He gets shot by a bow. <laughs> Fair arrow magnets. So you have Sauron there. Oh, that Witch King one is so yeah, it's cool. So good. Wow. This is why you guys need to be on the Patreon because that's right. I know, so you can I'm not see the figures. Anything. Oh, that's so <laughs> mean. <laughs> He is again, holding his big uh, morning star, which is awesome. That is yeah. cool. And then, of course, you got Tariel. <sighs> Jessica's favorite. Tariel's the best character ever. And Thranduil the in most battle. Most well-written Thranduil. character, is, I think, is what you mean, Scott. It's the best written character. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't the, the correct our guest. Yeah. <laughs> the She's just like the most well-rounded, ever thought with. out, <laughs> well-developed. She has two good rounds, right? Is that what you, what you would say about her? Make it three, baby. Okay. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's very well-rounded. Very well-rounded. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Scott, since I know you well. Yep. Do you like the Tariel character, actually? I do. I, I do like the Tariel okay. character. Why? I like having... I like having women in things that I'm watching. Is one thing. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And, gotcha. And while it's, and while it's ham-fisted... Um, I don't I don't mind a little bit of like a romantic subplot. <laughs> the thing that bothered me about it was I'm all I will buy in. I I like mismatch love, star cross lovers, Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite things of all time. Ju- you know, Romeo and Juliet set me up for failure in life. Like I I buy in to the romance. The thing that I don't love is that the dwarf that she pulled, who's it? Who is it? What's his name? He dies, right? Owen was the uh, Owen? No, it's um oh gosh. It's I'm, one of the, um, the twins. I'm blanking so hard. Uh, yeah, Keely. 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 Keely is, if you watch the extended version, is just turned on by a female elf and then gets turned on by her because she's a female elf later. So it's not like, I love you for who you are. He just finds her hot. And there's no romance okay. in that. To be fair, if you were on death's door and this insanely hot angel saved you, you'd probably fall in love too, no matter the who The love was. was there. He was interested before this. Yeah, he was interested because she's a mm-hmm. slamming hottie, and then she <laughs> saved him, and it sure. became true love. Why did she fall in love with him? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> because he's the because one he's... dwarf without, like, a big bushy beard. Like, he's got, like, peach fuzz, and she's like, oh, yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> he's just a man who's short. He's yeah. not. He's not a. What? What? What was that great tweet? How come all of the all of the dwarves either look like their propaganda about how you know dwarves are awful, or they're um, like stunning models with hair attached or something? There is there was some, no yeah, in between. There was some there's no great. In between. No, there's no in between. You're either Richard Armitage or Keeley. I don't know. Is Aiden Gillen plays Keeley or? You're an actual dwarf. Though there's the, <laughs> like, go look at a picture of Thorin from the movie, and then look at Balin, and it's like, okay, one of you is an actual dwarf from Lord of the Rings, the other is just like giving me the Zoolander face for three movies. <laughs> it's so it's so true. There's a lot of challenging aspects of those movies, and that's one of them yeah. for sure. 
I, let yeah. me put it this well, way. I think she does her utmost. I think I actually kind of, even though I don't love it, I kind of buy that Legolas is sort of in love with her and like hmm. still supports her. Actually, Ben really helped me right the ship on what I thought was like F boy behavior, but he like oh, no. never demanded. Yeah, no, you did. You you got me. Listen, for all of my hot takes and my incorrect takes, I'm never above being corrected. I'll <laughs> I'll stand my ground a little bit. I'll dig a okay. little deeper, and then I'll take the note. Eventually, I think that's a good quality to some extent. Anyway, I I kind of like that Legolas is like still going to help her, even though like she doesn't return his feelings, and I think she does the best she can with just. Uh, totally like why is she there but the the love plot between her and keely is very bothersome to me yeah i think it's because they didn't have enough time to make you care about all the dwarves like like when thorn dies you feel it um but mm -hmm. just like when feely and keely are supposed to die you're like okay you know when when his brother Bye. feely <laughs> dies you're like okay that sucks bummer Right. Um, but Bummer. <laughs> so like they, they wanted to Peter Jackson knew you needed an attachment of like why you should care about these dwarves outside of Thorin. Honestly, they like I know they couldn't because they'd established Balin. But like if he would have died in the movie, then it would have mm. been a big deal because he was the one always coaching up Thorin, you know, always talking to Bilbo, always being like that would have meant something. But I know that they couldn't because yeah. he's got to go to Moria. They couldn't, they could have given us a, like, he's in danger moment, though, or, like, there's a threat of life, like, maybe they make a huge digression. Um, hmm. Overall, those movies are more enjoyable to watch than not, but um, I really yeah. just wanted to get your temperature on Tariel. She's beautiful, and she does, she doesn't 100% compare to Liv Tyler, but she does her, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Who's that? Is that Aragorn? No, that's Keely. But again, Ew. you can't even tell because he's, he's just a short a man. Figurine guy. He's just a short man. <laughs> <laughs> he's making them kiss for all the audio kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> listeners. Oh my um, god! Great, thank yeah, you so I, much. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for that. That's, that's really all the reason we invited Scott on is just to make action figures kiss on screen. So if you're not on yeah. Patreon, then like, I'm really sorry. We're basically I mean, taking a week off. Yeah. It's it's. It's it's all about it's all about the toys. It's there's my my it's Tariel so pop, that, like, one of the of few pops I own. Have, it's so strange that both of your figurines have daggers. When like I feel like she doesn't really use yeah. them. Maybe in her final fight against Bulg that she doesn't do well against. But maybe when she comes, maybe when she comes to get him, is there like hand to hand sure. battle? Well, but well, yeah, there's a little bit. But remember her iconic scene when they have the when they have the goblin. I think it's a goblin or an orc. I don't. I can never keep track of if it's, it's a goblin or an orc. But when they're torturing him and she comes in, she does the cool dagger flip and she kills him. Gotcha. That's a cool scene. Okay. Got it. So yeah, I, I and they not, might be referencing that. Did not and, retain that. I so Alex has all of all of the pops. I don't think he has any from the the Hobbit. I think he drew the line at. I might have to get. So you did you go out of your way to get Torio? Torio? She was she was on on sale. <laughs> so so Not yes, surprising. but <laughs> I kind of want her. I'll take it. I get. I would get but that. I'm 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 happy. I'm happy that I have her. Scott got me three uh, uh, of the only pops I have. I I was gifted an out of the box um, Aria singer from. Fifth Element. Are you guys familiar with that movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the blue tentacle. Yes, yes. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time, literally top five or top ten movies of all time. And someone just, a friend of mine from my improv theater gave me like an mm. actual figurine and the pop figurine of her, which is very cool. And then Scott got me um, Paul from the Lynch Dune with um, Kyle McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Oh, with the, the still suit? In his still suit. Then he got me um, Fade Routha, who uh, I don't know that we've met Fade yet, right? Fade is about to be played by um, Austin Butler. Is that Butler, Austin Butler? Yeah. Right. Austin, Austin Butler, Butler. yeah. Um, played by Sting in David Lynch's movie. Yeah. And Scott got me Fade Routha, the Sting one. And I was like, uh, it's cool, Scott, but he's not 
like half naked, like yeah, this. he's on his uh, metal speedo. Correct, which was so rude mm-hmm. of me to say because what a just thoughtful gift from Scott to begin with. And uh, less than a few months later, I was gifted the exclusive Fade Route, the metal speedo Funko. Mm-hmm. Wow, I can't believe they made that. That's oh, awesome. They, oh. How could they not? Yeah, it basically <laughs> yeah. is like his most iconic thing. Like One of my favorite yeah. things about Scott, too, is his love language so very clearly is um, gift, gift giving. Yeah. And that's how I knew he wanted to be my friend, because when we were doing um, TTRPGs on Hyper together, well, he perfect. would like go, hey, you mentioned this one oh. thing before, and here's a like a piece oh, of candy that you oh. like or whatever. Like he would show up with gifts and I'd be like. Oh, this guy wants to be my friend because otherwise he's a, an introverted, sh- not shy guy, just like not gonna like strike up small talk yeah. with you beforehand. Yeah. So it, it, Scott has adorned me with wonderful gifts in our in the tenure of our friendship. Quick uh, insider question: uh, yeah. I can ask this because it's closed now, so there's no doxing. Uh, <laughs> did you guys ever go to the Federal after Hyper RPG uh, and like have a drink or dinner afterwards? Like twice, and I don't know if you were working there at that time. I was. Were you? Yeah, that's how I met Emma. That's how I like got into this whole thing. It's like I met Emma and Cameron, uh, and then I started like interning hmm. and stuff. Crazy. Yeah, I, I did not know that. Yeah, I did not know that was that was how that connection was made. That's now cool. the federal, I have feelings about because it would always <laughs> get too loud. It's a very when, loud place. When the ba- the band would start to play or whatever. Oh my god! Tuesday jazz nights were no one wanted to work them. So like, if you were new, mm-hmm. you got the Tuesday jazz you night got- because it was a a very rude crowd, and it was so weird because like there was two sets. They do like they'd start at eight p.m. or so, and they'd play till nine thirty, and then like it was really you know like that 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 like you know some good stuff like the stuff you sure. do want to go to dinner with. And then they take like a half an hour break and then come back at 10, basically till close and just rock the house. And it's yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Like, it, go upstairs because we had a whole thing but upstairs. But you could hear the techno coming from upstairs. Yes. Like, we had a, 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 a place upstairs for people that haven't been. Federal is a bar in, in North Hollywood, two story brick building. And upstairs, was like this whole showroom where we'd have burlesque shows, we'd have comedy shows on the weekends, we'd have a nightclub. Like it was a big space. And so like when I say go upstairs, it's not being denigrating. They're all very talented musicians. But when you're downstairs in a tiny bar, it's just loud as hell. I want to be able to talk to my friends. And whenever I was at the Federal, even though like the ambiance is cool, the seating was really cool. You can either be in the front room and eat dinner, which is a little small area, or like you get like a cool little lounge area. And then you can't talk to anybody. And that's not yeah. the, that was mm-hmm. never like, and I think our show was Tuesday nights. So that's, if we were to go do that, that was after. Yeah, we, that sounds um, right. It, it, I also, we also had like a private party at the Federal a couple of times, which like, it's a, it was a cool spot, but, it, uh, but yeah, that, that really turned, you know what it was? I was just turning 30 and my eardrums just didn't want that loud noise anymore. Oh yeah. I wore earplugs every Tuesday night. Like I... I'd been to too many warp tours in high school. I've been to too many concerts. You went to warp at... tours? Oh that's God, a... yes! I'm that's so the, jealous. That's, a, that's what's so crazy is that all like the the when we were young tour, you know, just happened in Vegas, where it's like My Chemical Romance and Fall Out Boy and Paramore and like all these bands that I literally I went to a Fall Out Boy in at Warp Tour, and I don't I don't want to say Haley Williams herself gave me this, but like. Her band, Paramore, was there at the Fall Out Boy thing because it was the same um, label fueled by Ramen. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And oh, that's the they name were of the passing label? How out, cute. E- yeah. They were passing out EPs. And I was like, who's this band with this orange haired chick singer? And like high school me, like put it on. I was like, oh, this is really good. And like, I, I'm not saying like, oh, I started Paramore, but I was like, I got the, I probably have the EP somewhere back at home, like in my storage. Like, so that's I grew up cool. listening that's to these bands. Cool. So, yeah. That's cool. And then yeah. that was, it was $35 to see 20, 30 minute sets of all your favorite <laughs> punk alternative bands. Like 
I saw All American Rejects. I like I saw Thursday. I saw Silverstein. Like, all of yeah, them. Yeah, all of this. Mm. Like yeah. I remember seeing the Offspring at Warp Tour, and you so saw cool. on the side of the stage all the other bands watching them because that's the punk band they grew up listening to. So it was really that's cool. So and then cool. you come to in 2023 when we were young comes out. Oh, sorry, the tickets are six hundred freaking dollars. <laughs> To see the same bands you saw for $35 15 years ago. And it's wow. just like, um, I know inflation exists. Not like that. <laughs> crazy town. Crazy. That's but, but they know wild. that they could get that because people are paying that did. for Coachella. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they yeah. did. Like, I, uh, I think that was the ticket price for uh, Paul McCartney when he played Dodger Stadium a couple of years ago, which would have been a mm. wonderful experience to see him. And that was sure. I was super priced out of that. Um, so, so Scott, do you think today's episode with us and how, and, and the way we meandered, like Ben and I tend to, uh, was that well reflected in the tarot card that we pulled? (laughs) Uh, uh, No, but I'm going to use that tarot card to inform the rest of my day. Oh, that is so wonderful. So when Scott and I were, um, in the same city and we were doing live streams together, he mm. had found a – or had – because, you know, Scott mm. is a trinket keeper. He has a whole oh. room of uh, all the toys he's collected throughout his life. And then his kids have in, in hab- uh, inherited mm. this habit of, this is a cool stone. I'm going to put them on my shelf of stones now, you know. And he, he found his grandfather's collection of runes and yeah. uh, Rider weight tarot cards. So we did the tarot. We read tarot to our okay. our, um, our community when they would tip us for it, which was surprising, right, Scott? Because your grandfather never showed any interest in the arcane, right? Then, then that, as far as I know, he was he was very um, he was very he loved education and learning things. So he had tons of books, and he painted, and he did all of these different things, but. Yeah, I mean, after sadly, of course, after he passed away, but we found all sorts of interesting things that he had owned and just kept around. Yeah, you're not supposed to use someone else's tarot cards, although these, while they looked old, didn't really look used. So I felt pretty good about keeping them. You're, you're supposed to like you want to keep that energy pure. I, I we we learned things as we went along, wouldn't you say, Scott? Even- no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for for nodding on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this has been this has been excellent. This has been wonderful. Um, to be fair, Scott caught himself, but he was just like, mm-hmm. "Yep." Oh wait, I'm not. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, yes. <laughs> it's more a symptom of how uninteresting the the question I asked was. Um, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm used to live streaming, so I, yeah. oh, okay. No, I, I know, and we are on video right now, so I get the right. <laughs> the miss, but it was just funny. It was just dead silence. I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. "Yep." Um, <laughs> so I, th- I think that's. I think that about does it for today. I think another time we could have you. Uh, you did share that there are some Lord of the Rings. How many Lord of the Rings entries do you have in your uh, naming your little geek book? Oh my god, that's a good question. Um, I should have I should have prepared the answer I, to that. I'm okay. not sure, but there are a lot. Uh, I have an entry for each of the dwarves in Thorin's company, and believe me, that took a lot of time to research wow. what was actually in what did Tolkien actually say about them versus what was in the movies? Because a lot of them don't really have any defining characteristics in the book other Besides than like the an color- axe in their head and <laughs> right or, or the, the it's the color of their hood or what instrument they carry are mainly uh, the yeah. differentiations um but yes i have a, a lot of names did you pull from north norse mythology in order to like fill out those those yeah. kind of names and stuff too I mean, I talk about where the name came from, for sure. So the ones that are from Norse mythology, I do talk about that, yeah. So if you don't know, and we did you know, talk about this briefly at the top, Scott wrote a beautiful, awesome book that I love having on my shelf called Name Your Little Geek. He's holding it up for our Patreon viewers at the moment. It's not only like just a really great appendix of like all sorts of names. It's beautiful. It's a it's a l- wonderful looking book that you won't feel sad to have in your bookshelf. Just in general. True. But it helps. It's always helped me with like coming up with names, you know, 
other than Jonathan to name my dwarf in a, in my D and D campaign or something like that. So you don't need to ha- be considering having kids in order to get that book. It's great for naming anything from role playing game characters. Name your Wi Fi network. Name Wait, your name sword. Your, your plants. <laughs> <What? Yes. laughs> name your wife. Um, yeah, people. I, I know people who use it for naming their characters and their short stories. Um, it's also just fun to read about names and characters. It's great. Yeah, and, and Scott and I have done a couple of panels at Comic Cons, uh, all about names and stuff. Ben, yeah. do you know why you were named Ben? I don't. I don't think I've ever asked that honestly. I think you're going to have to ask uh, your family and get back to us next episode. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Scott, so what do you think is the most popular Lord of the Rings name from your, like, either naming your little geek or just, like, in general? Sure. Like, you know, naming your character or pet or Wi-Fi network? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, I, yeah, I can't I mean, imagine I think... we see Frodo's running around, like, a little kid, little boys running around <laughs> named Frodo. Yeah, not not probably not a lot. Well, hopefully more than Bilbo, but uh, <laughs> I mean, what if someone named as... their kid Bill the Pony? Like the whole the full <laughs> name. <of that? laughs> I'm sure it's been done. Can I just go by yeah. Bill? No, yeah. Bill the Pony, go clean your room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I would have to guess that Gandalf is the the most popular for for pets, especially. I I've seen I've definitely seen cats named Gandalf. Uh, my so friend's would, cat would... um, is named Mithril. Oh, very pretty. pretty gray cat. Like that. That's a beautiful name for a cat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like what's the most traversable to like our modern world. Like, like A was yeah. not a bad name. Honestly, it was not a bad name at all. That's true. Yeah. Alex, and I'm, like, I'm surprised. Like, I wonder because you know, so many people named their kid Daenerys this like this last right. generation wow. because of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if we've got you know any Arwens or Awens out there, or like a Luthien. Yeah. yeah. Um. Alex. Alex wants to do a Lorlin from the trees. Okay. Um, okay. The two trees. That's pretty. That it's, works. It's very very pretty. Um. So yeah, there are there are ways you can pay homage. I think there's some of these names work really well in um your middle name application as well. Yes. If, you're, if you're middle, sure. do you yeah. have a middle name, Ben? Yeah. What you want to share it? You know it. I I forgot it. Ben is my middle name. Oh, that's. Uh, so, I did right. not forget it then. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, see? Yeah. Word, word. We have talked about this, but I didn't mm. retain it. Well, <laughs> um, Scott. Yes. You can be found everywhere on the internet uh, as Norse meat. Yes. Which came to you in a dream. Is that right? It it literally did. I woke up and I thought, Norse meat? What the hell is that? And what can I do with it? I don't have a band, so this will just be my internet name. It's so disturbing. That's a true story. But it is who you are, <laughs> and I love who you are. Um, as we mentioned at the top, folks, get involved with our show. Support this show if you like us. If you don't like us, don't tell people to not listen. You know, or yeah, leave just a give five us like five stars and just like go about your and day. Be on, and be on your merry way. Exactly. <laughs> Be on your Mary and Pippin way. A five-star um, review is never <laughs> early or is it late. It arrives exactly when it means to. And now is the time, folks. You're hearing this. It's a yes. sign. Five stars. Go to patreon.com forward slash podcast of the rings and join at any tier. And you'll be able to join us on our watch along of Rings of Power in order to prepare for the series where we're going to talk about the Rings of Power for the podcast. So uh, a new Patreon exclusive that we're going to have is we're going to have Scott back in a Patreon exclusive episode. We're only going to ask him yes or no questions, and he's going to either nod or <laughs> shake his head, and you have to watch the video to find out what he says, because he's not going to say a word. <laughs> fantastic. Actually, okay, so here's the thing. Two I'm of our <laughs> two of our goals are going to include Scott anyway, because if we get to t- when we get to 10 Patreon subscribers, <laughs> we'll watch on our own time. Lord of the G-Strings, and then come together, quite literally, to talk about it uh, and, yes. and, and, and and have that be a Patreon-exclusive episode with Scott as our guest for that. When we hit 15 subscribers, we are going to do the reading of the oh. original version of the Lord of the Rings animated movie where 
wherein yes, Fro- yes exactly yes. where Frodo yeah. and Galadriel have a sex scene yes. uh, Boromir and Aragorn, Aragorn have kiss share a bloody kiss like, with Arwen's blood on their lips yes oh, so, so great. the script exists We'll invite Scott. We'll probably have like Janelle or something on and do yes. that with us. So oh, there's sure. a lot. Yeah. Also, to I will be watching uh, Lord of the Dreams strings with my Dune popcorn bucket. No. <laughs> Shame. I still, need, I still need to get one. You just 3D print one, Scott. Shame. I'm shaming no. you. I'm shaming no, you. No, you can't 3D print these little tendrils that it comes with that like <laughs> refuses to let your hand get the like. They knew oh, what they so were cool. doing. They, they did. knew like this thing is impossible to actually eat popcorn out of. And if you're that's this not is what why you for. get the Patreon is because I'm showing you this thing that Jessica cannot look away from right now. It has got her in a in like a hypnotic stare. It's, have, so, it's so beautiful. I take yeah. so much umbrage with the design of the worm in general. There's been some shots from Denise movie that I'm like, okay, I can see why he made he made that choice. But if you know David Lynch's Dune as intimately as I do, you know that Denis was doing his best to not make it seem like David Lynch's Dune. And that really bothers me because David Lynch's Dune's worm is so much better. And then you get a bucket like that and it's just made, <laughs> it just is ruined culture for me for good. I I've it, com- it, it. completely <laughs> given up on society. That's I'm so awesome. glad you got one though. Good for you. I was walking down the steps of the AMC Burbank and I was getting some side Because <laughs> <laughs> Is that man proudly holding his sex toy? Because, uh, and also, <laughs> the employees know too because they didn't oh, sure. fill this up with popcorn. They gave me a popcorn bucket and then they gave me this on the side. And I was like, wait, are you do you not put the popcorn in there? He's like, no, it's a collectible. So I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's actually valuable information that's brilliant yeah it's it's hard enough to clean as it is oh yeah exactly oh my god it's gonna be collected all right (laughs) 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 that is going on our not safe for work Clips. Yeah, no, we we'll cut that one out. <laughs> no, I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna. Anyway, if you're listening this long, you deserve to hear that. Scott, thanks for being on this show. Go check out Ben on all his respective Twitches and Twitters at TTV Strider with the three instead of an E. And then I don't know. Go go enjoy <laughs> your bucket. And until <laughs> next time, Ben. May our paths meet again. God.